Hey everyone, welcome back to Elemental Cartomancy. Uh, we are back with another uh, Love the Spread, Spread the Love. Um, this is the Compass and Rose Tarot Spread. Okay guys, so this is the um, the 10 card spread that I've kind of adapted from one of the spreads in the Witch's Wisdom Guidebook. Um, so I'll show you the spread from here, if I can find it. <laughs> there we go. So the Compass Rose Reading and Spell, um, this is kind of what it looks like in the book. Um, and it takes you through, you know, the meanings of each of the cards. Now. I have adapted this quite a bit. Um, you'll have seen me use this a few times during the round table readings, actually, if you've um, if you've seen them. Okay. So the way that I use this, or the way that I've found it really useful, is if someone asks for a reading, you know, what's coming up for me for the next whatever amount of time, you know. I think the people that I've read for have said three months. So let's have a look and see what's coming up in the next three months. Okay, it's an elemental spread, so there is quite a heavy focus on the, the four elements, um, as we'll see when we go through it. So, what we'll do first is go through the position, um, you know, what, what the positions mean. Uh, and then, after that, we can kind of turn over the cards and we can have a go at like a sample reading. So, let's take that as our sample question, you know what's ha what's coming up for me in the next three months okay so we've got the um the bonfire tarot here um that we're using to have a look at this today now i'm hoping might actually uh just zoom out a smidge um hopefully yeah i think that should be a bit better um so yeah let's have a look at the position meaning so the first card is kind of a like so it's the you know it's the first card in most spreads it's kind of a card just to kind of identify your question or your querent it will tell you about them um just in general you know it might be their personality it might be kind of things that they're bringing to the table you know the second card crosses it and this is the kind of environment that they're in you know things that are happening around about them that are influencing them okay Okay, so the third card, um, and this is where we get into the elements. The third card is going to go up here. Um, so you'll see if you recall what it looked like in the book. I've kind of a changed the, you know, how it looks a wee bit. And to be honest, I think that was mainly in the first place. That was the main reason for that was so I could fit it onto the table nicely. But I actually, I quite like how um, how it looks now. So. The third card, so we're into the element of fire, first of all. Um, and, you know, the first, you know, the, the four initial elemental cards are situational. So it's kind of a what type of situations am I going to come up against in this element? So in the element of fire, we're looking at passions. We're looking at things that drive us, you know, things that are important that we feel are part of our identity. Um, kind of other things that we feel as though we've been put in, on this planet to to do, you know. Um, so it might be someone's job we're looking at, you know. It might be a particular project that they're working on that they feel really strongly about that really kind of lights that fire in them. Um, you know, it, it might be their family, you know. For some people, their passion and their fire is their family, you know. Um, so that's, you're looking at kind of a what type of situations are coming up around, um, around that for the person. The next element is air and again, situational. So what, what's going, what, what are we looking at in the, in the mind, you know, um, what kind of situations is the person going to come up against and particularly how are those situations going to make them think? Um, how is it going to affect their psychology? Um, sometimes the element of air can be the kind of more troublesome element, you know, if you're more more into like the playing card type associations, we're looking at spades and we're looking at, you know, the kind of negativity, the, the troubles, the, um, the, the kind of shadow aspects of the reading. Um, but for me, 
the bare bones of it, the essentials is, you know, what what's going on in the mind. Um, the next element is water. Um, so we've done the the head. Now we do the heart. So emotions. What what's going? What's coming up for this person emotionally? Um, and the final card is earth. Okay, and earth is kind of a, like putting it all together. It's kind of a, like your material world. Um, you know, it, it could be what's coming up for the person financially, what's coming up for them health wise. It, it could be something very like kind of like what's coming up for them in terms of their their home you know you're you're looking at someone's material physical world and that's a very very general thing um so you're hoping usually that the card that comes up is going to kind of allude as to what we're looking at you know and generally there's going to be an overlap here so you've got four element cards but you can, you can be looking at the different aspects of one particular thing which you know you would normally expect to see reflected in the first two cards, and um, so we could be looking at, looking at maybe one or two like predominant subject matters, and we can be looking at you know how is that person how's that, how's your person going to feel about them how how are they going to think about them you know how's it going to affect them materially, um so yeah anyway. The next four cards are kind of going to go alongside the element cards. So this is the second fire card and this is the advice. Okay, so the four, the next four cards are advice cards. Okay, so we've got advice in terms of the fire card, advice in terms of the air card, advice in terms of the water, the emotions and advice in terms of the, the kind of material situation that we're seeing okay and then there's one final card and we place that here um that kind of a uh, pairs with like the crossing card if you will and that's basically taking everything into account you know if we if we listen to all of the advice and take all of this into account what is the likely outcome what direction are things heading in okay so what I, I try and usually do, uh, or what I do usually do, hopefully, unless I forgot, is um, in the description for the video, I'll put, um, you know, the, the position meanings, just so that you've got them there and you can see them at a glance. Um, so let's have a look at the first card. Um, so this was just kind of a, a questioner or querent. Um, and we've got the page of wands. Now this... For me, is someone who is, you know, an adventurer. I'm going to check the zoom on this camera. The focus, rather. Try not to have it wobbling. Uh, right, let's just see. Yeah, that's hot. That's focusing. Can take that's fine. Um, so page of wands. We're t looking at someone who craves adventure. You know, who who looks for excitement in life. Um, someone who's got lots of ideas as well. Lo lots of lots of new ideas happening. You know, it's their their head's an amazing place to be. Um, if you're looking for you know creative thinking, if you're looking for I to bounce ideas off of someone, or if you're looking to be inspired. Page of Wands is a good person for that. Okay, what they maybe lack is the staying power to actually see these ideas through. So often with your Page of Wands type persona, they'll have this big long line of unfinished projects behind them, and it's just because it's the it's the kind of initial the novelty the the initial spark that excites them. Actually getting into it and doing the work. They sometimes need guidance from other personalities in the tarot to be able to see it through. So that's our page of wands. So that's our questioner. Okay. So that suggests that you know our imaginary uh, questioner has maybe kind of got a new project in mind, or they're thinking about you know going off on a new adventure. Um. So let's see what kind of a um what kind of a influences we get from the other cards. Um, okay, so we've got the sun coming up as the kind of a environment, the immediate influences and stuff. So that's look, it's looking really positive for our um, for our querent. It looks as though you know things are looking good for them. The stars are aligning, if you want to put it that way. You know, um, you know the people around about them seem very supportive. The environment is very conducive to this kind of a 
um, you know, this this creativity that they um they they, they seem to be the zone that they're in at the moment. Um, let's have a look and see what's happening in their fire. We've got the Knight of Coins. Okay, so in terms of passion, so Knight of Coins, for me, that is the fire of Earth. So the Knight brings the fire and the coins bring the Earth. Okay, so there is fire there, which is great. You know, we like to see fire in the fire element. It shows that things are moving in the right direction. The things might be moving a wee bit slower than what the questioner would like, would expect, when I say expect, expectations. So in terms of the knights, we expect them to be fast moving, we expect excitement, we expect lots to be getting done, high energy. And don't get me wrong, all four knights do bring that, but of all the knights, the knight of coins is the slowest, you know. We see the tortoise here, it's kind of, it's kind of like the, the, the parable of the tortoise and the hare. That is your knight of coins. So sometimes it can be, you know, you can look at your knight of coins next to his, uh, you know, his uh, companions, the other knights, and think, this guy is so slow, you know, what is going on? He just doesn't seem to move anywhere. And it's not that he doesn't move anywhere, but he's just very calculated. He's very careful about what he's doing and everything is considered really carefully. Okay. um, So... That's coming up in the fire and that suggests to me that our page of wands, maybe things aren't moving for them quite as fast as they would like. Maybe they're quite confused about that because they're looking at the environment and, you know, perhaps the people around about them. Everything seems to be right, but just things don't seem to be moving as fast as they want them to. Maybe that's why they've come for a reading, you know. Um, but I think that this is encouraging. It's saying, you know, yeah, things might be moving a bit slower. You might be required to just take it one step at a time and make sure that every step that you do take there's a purpose and there's a reason behind it but that's not a bad thing this is still promise of success it's still saying you're going to meet your end goal you just might not get there quite as quickly as what you would like let's have a look and see what's happening in the realm of air so we've got the, we've got a lot of court cards coming up haven't we so we've got the page of coins coming up um so, page of coins is earth of earth, okay, so we're very, very, very grounded there, and air is obviously, in many respects, the opposite element to earth, because, you know, you've got the earth and you've got the air, um, there, there's, there, there's a clash here that, that I'm sensing uh, with the page of coins, if you think about the, the, the attributes of the coins courts, they're very kind of a careful slow moving people everything they do has a purpose behind it now the pages are all students okay they all eager they're all eager to learn but the page of coins you know it's more i would say you would expect to see um this card coming up for someone who's more of a physical you know likes to learn things physically you know so likes to work manually with their hands not not so often coming up for the big thinkers you know for the real um you know pursuits of the intellect um page of coins i would say is probably more I, I, it sounds as though i'm uh, you know, I'm dissing manual work. I'm really not like I, I, not at all. I, I I worked myself. I've worked myself in my and you know in manual trade, not not trades, but I've worked manually before myself. And so I'm I'm trying to be careful about how I'm wording this. I'm it's almost like I'm backtracking, isn't it? But the the point that I'm making is is that your page of coins is usually someone who's really kind of handy, who can, can add, they're not scared to get their hands dirty, they want to get in and amongst something and just kind of get it sorted. Whereas your your, your swords courts, which is your, your air, which is the element, the realm that we're in, they tend to want to kind of penetrate things with their mind, they want to understand more, you know. Uh, their weapon is their intellect, their mind, whereas the, the page of coins is weapon. It's, you know, it's that kind of getting in and amongst things, it's their hands, it's, you know, actually kind of manipulating the earth around about them. 
Um, and another thing is, like, the element of air obviously can you associate it again with being quite high energy, with quite fast moving. What we see in our page of coins here is they're, um, they're juicing, well, it looks like limes. Um, you know, they're juicing citrus fruit. Now, anyone who's ever tried to do that, it's a long and grueling process. It takes, you know, a lot of limes to get a wee bit of, not very much juice. Um, so it's something that requires this kind of staying power, okay? And it's a staying power that sometimes the mind can, it can lose patience with. So, again, I'm getting this feeling like, we want things to be moving quickly, but they're not moving anywhere near as quickly as we want, and there might be an element of frustration with that. Um, let's look at the element of water. So let's see what's happening in the emotions. Now, we've got the Empress coming up, which is really positive. Um, the Empress is like kind of the Mother Earth card. It's the ultimate kind of um, that mother energy, you know, very nurturing. There's lots of creativity happening in the, in the Empress. So this, for me, is a really kind of positive emotional card. Um, it, it just kind of suggests that things are kind of moving along as as you would want them to. There's nothing kind of a negative hitting me with this. Um, Earth, let's have a look and see what's happening with Earth. We've got the High Priestess. So... Again, it suggests that there's a bit of a standstill in terms of the, the earth element. More and more, especially with kind of the, the fire, the air and the earth positions here, I'm getting the feeling that this person has lots of ideas, but in terms of actually making things real, in terms of actually doing stuff and manifesting, there's, you know, things are just happening a wee bit slower than what you would like. The High Priestess is the, the, the big thinker, you know, she's got all of the knowledge. And the High Priestess kind of energy is like kind of connecting with your unconscious. Um, you know, getting to know your tools, getting to know, uh, just plan the journey ahead. She's not actually... Uh, it's not a big card for you know or oh, everything's happening for you you know everything's coming up roses it, not much is really happening in my opinion in the high priestess it's it's, it's quite a, a a thinking card rather than an acting card if that makes sense um so i'm getting more and more the feeling like you know you're getting all this fire and this person's kind of a, like their personality and stuff but things don't really seem to be happening for them. So it'll be interesting to see what the advice cards tell us and, you know, what what, what direction things are going in. In terms of the, the night of... Sorry, in terms of the element of fire, the advice here is the nine of coins. So the nine of coins, on the surface level, we see someone who's comfortable, who's affluent, you know, who has everything that they want in life, basically, in, in terms of material. Um, but I think what we need what we need to remember is it takes a lot of discipline and staying power to get to where she is. You know, we quite often see the nine of coins with uh, some sort of, you know, falcon or, you know, bird. Here, this looks more like an owl to me. But the point is, in order to tame that animal, in order to kind of, you know, be one with that animal, that takes time, that takes effort, commitment, staying power, you know, there's a lot of work going in to be where she is. So I think in terms of the advice, you know, like, and these two are kind of singing from the same hymn sheet for me. This is saying, you know, I know that you want to move fast, you want to progress, uh, you want to move on and be, you know, in this kind of exalted place, but you kind of need to do the work to get there, you know, and sometimes things just take a wee bit of time. Again, there's promises, uh, promise of success, there's nothing negative that we're seeing here, it's just saying that you have to kind of take it one step at a time, the trouble with, you know, trying to fast forward and get from A to E 
is quite often the things that we miss out in B, C and D are necessary. And the further on we get, if we've not done that, if we've not set up that stable base properly, then things are more liable to fall apart further down the line. Um, so quite often it's just a good idea to remember that that Knight of Coins, his kind of principled approach, his purpose-filled approach to things, as much as it can frustrate us when we want to kind of um, progress as fast as we can, it, it, it's often quite necessary to, to bear in mind those principles. Let's have a look and see what advice we've got in the realm of air. Right, we've got the tower coming out. Okay. Um, it suggests that maybe a different mindset is needed. Okay. So, I mean, we're saying this, we're talking about this person's expectations and how they seem to want things to move quicker. The tower and the advice in terms of the mind, that you know, the element of air, so the mind, the intellect, um, all that kind of stuff, that suggests that maybe that person actually needs to do some shadow work on themselves. Maybe they need to work on that mindset. It's not, you know, the project. It's not the, the actual big thing that we're looking at that's the issue. It, it, it's the way that they're approaching it. It's, it's their kind of outlook and their expectations. They maybe need to be kind of brought down a bit, you know, brought down a peg or two. Um, uh, so we've got the element of water, the advice, the magician. So emotionally, this person seems to have everything together. You know, we've got two very powerful positive cards here, in my opinion. Suggest that they've got everything that they need um, in order to kind of connect with the element of water, we, we say emotions, but emotions are how we connect, connect to other people, connect to something that we're passionate about, you know, um, like, if you've ever heard the expression, you know, uh, you know, my heart was, wasn't in it, what we mean by that, you know, and you can say that, in terms of, like, for example, a job, you know, oh, I didn't last long in that job because my heart wasn't in it, what we mean by that is we didn't emotionally connect to what we were doing um why did i start going down that route we were talking about the element of water yeah so it's about connections um so there's everything they have everything they need to enable them to connect with the job there's maybe just like kind of just coming back to this tower and the, the element of air just kind of re-examining your mindset okay earth We've got the Ace of Cups. So, in terms of advice for the element of Earth, quite often for me, the Ace of Cups talks about self-respect, self-love, um, you know, self-care, looking after yourself, okay? If we've got that coming up as the advice and the element of Earth, um you know, quite often we're looking at things like health. We're looking at all of the things that keep us safe and secure and keep life sustained in the element of Earth. Um, but if we've got the Ace of Cups coming up, I think this person maybe needs to kind of concentrate on, you know, self-care. Quite often when, we, when we're being, uh, when we're driven, by our passions when there's something that we really want to do we tend to let things um we, you know we tend to let self-care go in the back burner a bit and i think this is potentially just a reminder to this person like remember you need to look after yourself at the end of the day once you've achieved this you still need to be like kind of fully um you know you, you still need to be healthy and and, and, and with us in order to enjoy everything that you've worked for. So remember that it's important to look after yourself as well. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of kind of work that needs to be done in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Um, you're going to have to kind of examine your mindset a bit, how you're approaching things, what your expectations are. Um, and you're maybe going to have to look more at uh, you know, self-care and kind of just remembering to pamper yourself, treat yourself every now and then, and um, take some time off from all this fire, you know, all of this, 
all of this that, that that's happening. Um, yeah. And then the final card, like we say, is the outcome. And we've got the Queen of Wands. So started with the page, and we're we're ending up with the Queen. So it's definitely moving the way that we want it to. We can we our questioner, our imaginary queen, they can do this. They've absolutely got it. What it takes to do it. Um, to be fair, lots of really positive cards. There's just a couple maybe that that, that are asking them to kind of re-examine things and that maybe kind of do something that's going to be quite difficult. I think this tower by far is probably the going to be the most difficult. It's the most difficult ask that the reading has of the queen. Um, but you know. If they can kind of do that, if they can re-examine their mindset, if they can make sure that they're, you know, that, that they're caring for themselves, then they've got what it takes. And the Queen of Wands, you know, I think celebrity of the tarot when I see the Queen of Wands, um, this is someone who, well, they're perfectly balanced. They've got that 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 really kind of perfect balance between the elements of water and fire, um, and that's why they can be the celebrity of the tarot that's why they can stand to be in the limelight you know have all that attention um because they've got that water element there you know to keep to keep themselves cooled down essentially they've, they've got that kind of a emotional side to them that can help them stand all of the the passion and um you know the the purpose the the, the drivenness that's not a word um, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, I, that's um, that that's the spread. That's how I would read these cards. Um, give it a go, everyone. Let me know what you think. Um, if you think this is helpful, um, I'd be interested to hear how you get on with it. Okay. So that just leaves me to say thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope everyone has an amazing rest of your day, weekend you know, whatever it happens to be when you're watching this, uh, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.